Anyone who's able to consistently get a result is not lucky. They're just doing something different than you. So for example, money, wealth, abundance. Is there a science to financial abundance? When I went to write some of my financial books, how did I do it? I knew a lot already. I'd worked with people like Paul Tudor Jones for 24 years, one of the greatest financial traders in history. But I went to 50 of the smartest financial people on earth, the Ray Dalios, the Warren Buffetts, all those individuals and found out what did they do differently than everybody else. And not only did I write a book, a number one bestseller, New York Times bestseller, but I applied it myself. And I took my companies from doing 50 to 100 million into the billions by just applying exactly what they did. If we talk about health, I wrote a book where I interviewed 150 Nobel laureates, the top individual scientists, people doing rejuvenation therapy, stem cells. So health, there are certain rules. We're all unique biochemically. But are there some universal rules that if you don't live by them, you're gonna have pain in your body, yes or no? So it is a science. Write down, success leaves clues. And you heard of Jim Rohn? He was my original teacher and he used to say, success leaves clues. If someone's successful, not lucky, what are they doing different than you? He used to say, find out what poor people are reading and don't read it. He said, I don't just mean poor financially, I mean poor emotionally. What you pour in your mind is what manifests your life. So if you and I want to succeed in achieving something, our best way of doing it is a simple formula. And let's try it. How many of you in this room have ever achieved something that when you first came up with a dream or goal or desire, it seemed totally impossible, and yet somehow you made it happen? Raise your hand if you've done this. Say I. Say I. So I don't have to teach you the science of achievement. What I have to get you to do is identify what did you do when you achieved at the highest level something that seemed impossible. So I want you to think about that thing that once was a dream or a goal in your life. It could have been something as simple as a car or a relationship or a position or a job or your own company or whatever it was. What was the first thing you did to take it from dream state where it seemed impossible to start to really make progress? How many of you started to obsess about it? That is, you started to think about it constantly. You started to focus on what you want. Raise your hand if massive focus and energy went into it. That's right. So write down where focus goes, energy flows. If you focus on where you want to go, you'll make the turn in most cases. So that's got to be our first step, the power of absolute clarity. Write down clarity equals power. The more clear you are exactly what you want, the faster and easier it is to achieve. And I'll tell you why. There's a part of your brain called the RAS. It stands for Reticular Activating System. It's a part of your brain that determines what you notice. When you decide something you really want, you focus on it consistently, your RAS starts to notice anything that can help you achieve it. I'll give you an example. How many of you have ever bought a certain car or maybe an outfit, and suddenly you see that car or outfit everywhere? Were those cars and outfits around before? Yes. But you didn't notice them because they weren't important. But now that you owned it, your RES says that's important and you notice them all. Similarly, if you set a goal, I want to invest in apartment buildings, you don't even know how, but you're obsessing about it. You can be in a Starbucks, there can be someone four tables over talking about a real estate deal and your brain will hear it. Because your RES looks for it, seeks out anything. It's like a missile. Today, missiles have a servo mechanism, like an RES. And when you shoot at it, if it moves, it follows it. Your RES is trying to make things happen. So you gotta be focused on what you want, not what you don't want, and it's gotta be specific. So the first step to achieving anything at the most basic level that seemed impossible, and you now have it, is because you gave it enormous focus. Well, sometimes focus alone can do it, but if it's a really challenging goal, you probably need two more steps. If it's difficult, it's not enough to just focus. You gotta take massive action. And notice I said massive action with effective execution. Because if you just take massive action and something isn't working and you keep on doing it, it's not gonna work. You have to change your approach. That doesn't work. Try something else. Keep changing until you get what you want. Here, I'll give you an example. How long would you give your average baby to learn how to walk? Before you shut them down and went, dude, you're just not a walker, give it up. You go, what are you, crazy? My kid's gonna keep trying until they walk. Magic formula. No wonder almost everybody in the world walks. So you've got to be able to change your approach until you get what you want. That's the secret. That's trial and error learning. What if you want to achieve things faster? If you want to achieve it faster, you know exactly what you want, so you got clarity and focus and your RAS is turned on. You want to take the right massive action. How could you accelerate this process? 
model someone who's already achieved what you're after. Figure out what they did and do what they did. Now, you'll still modify it to you, but if you take the same kinds of actions, you just sped it up. So if you know exactly what you want and you're obsessed on it, and you're taking massive action, ideally modeling what already works, then you only need one other step, perhaps, if it's a big goal. And that third step is grace. Some people call it luck, some people call it God, or grace. I look at my own life and I go, I worked my guts out for 47 years, 46 years, but I've also had grace. I was born at this time in history where I could get on a plane and go to other parts of the world. I could learn from the very best humans on the planet. I mean, I could go on and on about the grace in my life. I'm not here to lecture you spiritually, but I'm curious, how many of you have ever noticed the more appreciative you are for the things that have been given to you in this life, the more grace tends to flow to you? I'm curious, how many see this to be true? Say I. It's okay to recognize your part. We've all worked our asses off. But it's also good to notice there's also the parts that's beyond you that's made this possible. And when those two, three things happen, just about anything you've ever dreamed of can happen. So that's the essence of it. Now remember I said there were two key skills to master if you want an extraordinary life, life on your terms. So one is the science of achievement. Most of you are already good at this or you wouldn't come here. Now you might want to get better and I can help you get better because I've obsessed for a lifetime on the best strategies and how to speed up getting the result. We'll show you many of those. But the second skill is more important than the first skill, but it is not valued by most people in Western culture. And that second skill is the most important one. And that is you have to master the art of fulfillment. Notice I didn't say the science of fulfillment. I said the art of fulfillment. Why? Because what makes you fulfilled will be very different than the person next to you, even if they're your lover or best friend because we all are fulfilled differently. How many have been around somebody and you see they're so excited or turned on by something and you're like, huh? Like, doesn't, you don't share that enthusiasm. Who knows what I'm talking about? I'll give you an example. You ever gone to like a really expensive art place and you walk in and you look at this piece of art on the wall and you go, what, how much is that? And they go, $10 million. Who's ever had an experience like this? You thought this is insane. What fulfills one person seems like a joke to somebody else. You don't want to try and achieve what someone else is achieving because you might do it and not be fulfilled. You got to figure out what fulfills you. Success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. If we fail, what do you do? You get up, dust yourself off and try again, right? But if you succeed and you're still not happy, you're now what I call technically screwed, right? We got to make sure that you get fulfillment. Now, most people say, help me succeed and I'll be fulfilled. It doesn't really work that way. You gotta know what fulfills you. You gotta find what fulfills you.